Everybody that loves the Lord, say amen. amen. Lord, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Lord, I need you to breathe on me for a little while. You're the only one that can make preaching what it's supposed to be. Lord, ain't a man alive knows how to preach. If a man knows how to preach, he needs to quit. Lord, help us. Breathe on thy people. Stir and touch. Thank you, Lord, for letting us see the sweet Lancaster family. Thank you for giving John Carl that song. <laughs> oh, Lord, it helped me tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the sweet folks that have come from other churches and made it a priority to be in the Lord's house tonight. Thank you for Brother Foster, for this dear people. Lord, we just ask you to answer Jesus' prayers, whatever he's been praying for us. Answer those prayers. We don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But Lord, thank you for loving us. Help me for a little while now. In Jesus' name, all the Lord's people said, Amen. Amen. We love Brother Zorn. And uh, I don't know him well. We've met each other a few times. And we're in several of the same meetings, but never hardly together. But... Uh, I know that you've been having real church the last few nights. Thank the Lord for it. Uh, Brother Foster, there's a wonderful spirit here. <laughs> Thank the Lord. It's all I need to know. I know everything I need to know, and y'all ain't got to tell me a thing. Hallelujah. It's wonderful. And all these youngins, it's wonderful to see all these youngins. I don't ever see children. I don't. They get this stuff quicker than we do. I don't ever see kids and discount them and think, well, them are kids. The Lord said, me and you, folks, we can't get none of this until we become like little children. I don't ever see children and think they're not going to get it. I, I, I literally see grown folks, and, and I think, and I really do, I'm not trying to say, and I think, I don't know if they're going to get it. Too much unbelief moved in. <laughs> but it's good to see. But you know, I don't care if you're white-haired and aged. If you're the Lord, you're still one of his little ones. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hadn't he been good to us? I'm going to show you three things tonight, the Lord help me. In Mark 14, in Romans 8, and in Galatians 4, he cried, Abba, Father. Now the Lord will have to help us. Lord, I need to help us. This is my, and I don't, I hesitate to mention this. David, King David got in, he got the whole nation in trouble when he started numbering things. And so I'm telling you this not for any reason, just for you to get to know me a little bit. This is my 40th year preaching. I've been celebrating it. I was 13 when the Lord called me. And uh, this is my 25th year as a full-time evangelist. And so it's a quarter of a century. I'm 53, and i got three teenagers. <laughs> All of my friends are having grandkids, and I've just, I have great kids. <laughs> <laughs> me and Jennifer had a late start and didn't, went a decade, didn't think that we would, might never have children. But, uh, and now that I got them, I don't think I'll ever get rid of them. Ah, no, that ain't true. We're, we have a wonderful family. But the Lord, uh, I pastored 
nearly eight years before the 25 years. And I just have to preach, excuse me, out of my heart, out of my Bible. I just have to preach out of the Bible. And the Lord gives me, uh, you know, s studies and messages. And about the time I get them fixed up, ready to preach, he puts, he retires them. <laughs> I'll say, now, Lord, I've got that one fixed just right. He said, yeah, we're done with that. <laughs> Study something else in front of everybody. Okay. So that's how it works. The Lord's put this in my heart just the last couple of days. Are y'all in Mark 14 and verse 36? And uh, one of you young men that don't mind reading in front of everybody, uh, you good? You go to Romans 8, I think it's 14 or 15. Do we have another young man that don't mind? Okay, get Galatians 4, verse 6. I asked a preacher boy to read one night, and bless his heart, he, he was 16, but he couldn't quite read. So uh, I'm make sure y'all can read. I know we're still in Kentucky, but y'all can read, can't you? <laughs> up here in Kentucky. Well, I shouldn't have said that. Y'all are ready to fight. I, I, I meant to say Alabama, people from Alabama. <laughs> the Lord cried, Abba, Father. Look at this. I went over this last night in my meeting down in Georgia. I was in a real small and a very sweet country church. Ooh, we. <laughs> we went over these things, but I never got to th these things. Mark 14, 36. And he said, Abba, Father. And if you look in verse 33. He taketh with him Peter and James and John began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. You do a word study, and I'm old timey. I'm a King James Bible man. I, what I'm fixing to say is I'm not, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I'm telling you out of my heart. I do my word studies in reverse. If I want to know what the Greek and Hebrew means, I go to the English. And that's me. That's, that's, I, I believe that. And uh, this generation of non-Bible believers, they got no authority. And I'm not trying to be ugly, Pastor. I'm not a smart aleck man. But you, but you Southern Baptist and half of you Independent Baptist are so impressed with so-called expository preaching that I don't think they're really doing it. And they want, to, they want to be like the Roman Catholics of old. We're the only ones that know the ancient language. Y'all don't know what the Bible says. Baloney. Old baloney. Old baloney's been left on the back porch. If I want to know what the Greek or the Hebrew meant, I go to the English. The Lord told us. That's the finished product. I believe that Bible. Amen. I'm not up here to tell you what it should have said. I'm here to tell you what it did say it. And uh, you dig down the way Luke said it. You go read Luke and the death rattle. I've heard it two or three times. See, the motorcycle man was dying in a ditch. Me and my preacher buddy pulled over in the middle of the night coming from a revival and I heard that death rattle. They yanked his shirt open. I got, we got there before anybody. I found him in the ditch. We just seen a motorcycle spinning on the side of the road come up out of a bad juke joint out in the woods. And we seen the motorcycle spinning the lights on and the dust hadn't settled and found his body 40 yards up in the ditch wow. in the water down in the marshes of Florida. And I rolled him over. His face was in that water and the death rattle. And I screamed in his ear. I screamed down in his ear. He had a hole in that helmet. And I, I quoted John 3.16. I knew he was dying. I said, sir. Later they ripped the shirt and his vest off and it had a big skeleton with the finger that says, follow me to hell. 
that was tattooed on his whole torso. But God, I'm about to eat them flowers and run to Louisville. God put a preacher in his ear while he's dying. Must have had a praying mama or a praying grandma. You know it? It must have. God put a Baptist preacher in his ear while he's a dying. I hollered in his ear by faith. I quoted John 3, 16. I said, God must love you. He wants you to get saved, sir, while you're dying. I prayed with him and everything. That death rattle. I've heard the death rattle. Heard it in an old saint. I buried seven, eight white-haired women in my little church. I was 21 when I started pastoring and had several old white-haired saints. Buried every one of them. Heard that death rattle. And here he is and he cries, Abba, yeah. Father. Wow. I'm going to Romans 8. Is it verse 15? 15. Romans 8, verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. Again to fear. Again to fear. But ye have, have received the spirit of adoption. Yes. Whereby, we whereby we cry. Abba Father. Abba Father. Galatians 4, 6. Uh, here's your three things to take home and then we'll preach accordingly. I've got a burden to give to you. It's only three times in your Bible. Abba, Father. In the Gospel of Mark, the Savior cried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Abba. Yeah. In Romans 8, the saints cry. Yeah. Abba. Yeah. Yeah. And in Galatians 4, the Spirit cries. Yeah. Well, y'all ain't enjoying that as good as I am. I, that's, that's the Spirit cries. Abba, Father. Woo! Appreciate you men reading the Scripture. I'm going to split the love offering with the both of you. I'm going to give y'all the love, and I'm going to keep the offering. For the Lancaster, that's a good deal, ain't it? That's how the evangelists and singers split the offering. Hallelujah. The Savior cried. That's so we know we can. Saints cry. That's how we know we saints. The Spirit cries in your heart. Abba Father. That's how you know it's Him. Y'all ain't helping me. Hmm. Mm. Now I'll trust the Lord to feed me as y'all need to be fed. Abba and Father. I pulled 15 preachers off the shelf. Uh. Uh. And one of them was a liberal. He said, uh, Father shouldn't be in there. It's just a repetition that Abba should have been. But the other 14 preachers, thought, and I put that book away. I wasn't ever going to look at it again. The other 14, two or three of men got into it. Abba is the only found on the infant's lips. Wow. 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 It's a baby crying. Wow. Wow. English didn't have a word for it. Greek didn't have a word for it. Hebrew didn't have a word for it. It's an Aramaic word. Hmm. Preacher, you know what that is? That Aramaic, you know what it is. It was come from the Arabic people, but the Hebrews had used it. And the Hebrews had a sophisticated language. But uh, Aramaic was like the poor people. It was street talk, not ugly talk, but common man. It was word <laughs> that poor people. And you know, poor people have had a word for crying. Because poor people do a lot of crying. Because in, in some countries they're massacred. 
And I'm not going to be an ugly preacher, but whole villages can be raped and robbed. And the poor, they have a word for crying like a baby. And, and and if Abba was only found on the infant's lip, father was the Greek, and it was the sophisticated. It was the, it was only on intelligent lips. It was an advanced word, pater. And God wants you to know. <laughs> You can bring him your simple problems. <laughs> when it's so bad, all you can do is cry. And then if you got complicated stuff, you need to talk to him a while. He takes that too. Uh, I'm feeling real good about being here. And when I checked into that Staybridge suite, I went ahead and got a burden to extend this meeting for a month. <laughs> Just to let you know. And I ain't leaving the room either. I'm staying right there. <laughs> Who in here? I want to dispel a super spiritual notion that there's only a few people that can really get a hold of God. I want to get rid of that junk. When I leave here tonight with the help of God, now I can't do this, but the Holy Ghost can. I want every youngin to know, and I want every saved person to know that you ain't got to be good at praying. He's, he's got to be saved. He put the Spirit into your heart, and He's the one, and you can't pray, and you don't need to. The Spirit's in there, and He's crying. Yeah, good, good. You ain't got to be good at praying. You just got to be at praying. And 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 a prayer warrior ain't nothing but somebody who loves the Lord a little more than the rest of you, and they just go in there on purpose a lot. You could do that if you wanted. You could. You could. You could. Down. Girls, you can. I see a couple of white-haired ladies, and, and, and they can talk to the Lord. And y'all can just as quick as they can. Sometimes in the deep south, they'll say, all right, we got a special need. I, we need everybody that knows how to, just a few of you that really know how to get a hold of God. Well, I'm always confused there. I, I'm not. I, I know all I got to do is groan towards him and he hears me. So I, I want to come join, but then it sounded like an elite club that I shouldn't be in. I, I don't, those of you that know how to pray, I mean, that. I, It's almost like saying, those of you who know how to breathe, come down here and get a fresh breath. I think somebody asked Tozier or Spurgeon or Ravenel. Who cares who they ask? They ask somebody. What's more important, prayer or Bible? Reading your Bible or spending time in prayer? And he answered, well, what's more important, breathing in or breathing out. That Bible is breathing in. That's why you come to hear preaching. Y'all are breathing in right now. And, and prayer is breathing out. How y'all doing on your breathing seminars? Did your breathing instructor really help you? Checked YouTube lately, some YouTube videos on breathing. Nope. You know the only thing you need to do to breathe? They're going to be amazed at how profound I am, preacher. I'll be signing Bibles all night long. Every time y'all go to the bathroom, I'm signing your Bible. You'll appreciate it one day, maybe. 
You know what you got? You know what you got to do to breathe? You got to get born. And you come out. The water sack, and then somebody bam smacks you, and it's gonna be the rest of your life. They're gonna be smacking your tail the rest of your life, and you're like, ah! <sighs> How many of y'all need breathing lessons? Let me tell you something. Neither do you need praying lessons. You probably ought to take all your books on prayer, read them one time just to pick up something out of the guy's biography, and then burn them. Because all the books on prayer really are telling you that he knows how and you don't. And that's a lie. Whether he meant to or not, a lot of them are good men. They didn't mean to. They are just so in love with prayer, they wanted to write about it. It wasn't a bad person. But if you ain't careful, there are five essentials, seven keys three secrets, four steps. Got news for you. You don't need four steps, three keys, five principles, and seven essentials. You just need to go. You start telling me how to breathe, I'm going to start hyperventilating. My Lord, I ain't doing this right. <laughs> who in here, who in this room, could get their need met quicker than anybody. There's one. Seen another one over here somewhere. Seen a real little bitty one. May have done gone out. This one right here. That baby. How many weeks? Three weeks. That baby, hey baby, won't you give me the ABCs? <laughs> that baby ain't listening to me. <laughs> but, it, but it's hearing me. Yeah. Hey baby, uh, give us some Greek alphabet. Yeah. Hey baby, put a whole sentence together. That baby ain't... ain't, ain't but you know what that baby will do? If it's hungry. It'll cry. If it's in pain. Let's say a bumblebee stings that baby. And it's, it's going to cry. I'm not being funny. I'm not trying to be funny right here. I'm not being funny. If that baby uh, made a mess in its diaper. And then that, that acid irritated its tender skin and rashed it and hurt. That baby would cry. <laughs> I need somebody to clean up my mess. That baby would cry. Now, if that baby, is that y'all's grandbaby? If that baby started crying, I will guarantee you seven moms. 14 grandmas, 23 girls, daddy, granddaddy, 10 grown men, and five grandpas. If that baby cried longer than 10 seconds, half his church would be, what's wrong? <laughs> and without knowing the alphabet, ain't said mama, ain't said daddy yet. That baby cry. And everybody in this church to make sure if you need me, I'm here. We'll, and, and I can help that baby. Just because it cries. That's prayer. You ain't got to know ABCs. Romans 8, 24 or 25 or 26. We know not what. We should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I'm going to say something you don't hear in the Baptist church. All them prayer requests is telling me you don't pray. And, and, 
I'm fixing to get ugly, Pastor. <laughs> and some of you chatterboxes. Y'all pray for my great aunt. She lives in Oklahoma. And this fella she works with, they had a car wreck over in Arizona. Sorry, Arizona. <laughs> and we heard that and the fella broke his foot in Arizona. I want y'all to help us pray. But you quit wasting my time. If that feller with a broke foot in Oklahoma, if he knows God, God will help him. He don't need you chattering about it. Wow. Wow. All them prayer requests telling me you ain't praying. Mm -hmm. I don't y'all to help me pray. I got to tell over there out of the feller I work with on the job. Oh, good time. If you actually prayed over that, you'd give it to God and it wouldn't be on your mind. Wow. All them prayer requests tell me you ain't praying. You just like people to hear you. You give me somebody praying, they come out of the throne room and they've been with the Lord. They're not like, you let me pray over there. We got a number. You just love to talk about things. I mean, I do too. Take me to Waffle House at midnight and we'll get along for two hours. But quit telling me to pray about all that stuff. You don't even know what you're talking about. I need help. Yeah, right, right, right. Joe Parsons, before he died, that great old man of God, Harold Seitler and Bob Jones Sr. both called him pastor out of respect. He had a little prayer warrior. <laughs> Look at me, I called her a prayer warrior. Old habits. He had a little red-headed woman. I met her when she was 85. Her name was Hattie Crane. She was 24. She was a church pianist for Joe Parsons in Charlotte, North Carolina. Had a husband and two sons, two children. Husband was killed in a car wreck at age 24. And the Lord came to her and gave her a proposition. I don't understand everything I'm fixing to tell you. This is just her testimony. The Lord came to her and gave her that verse out of Timothy. For the younger widows, after they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, go off and marry and receive their first damnation. What does that verse mean? It means that the younger widows, after they've begun to wax wanton against Christ, they go off and marry and receive their first damnation. <laughs> well, what does that mean? It means the younger widows, after they've begun to wax wanton, <laughs> that's what it means. What it meant to her was, said the Holy Ghost told her, if you'll have him, Jesus will be enough. And I, you know, I, I don't think it's wrong for you to remarry if the Lord brings it to you. Make sure the Lord brings it to you. But for her, the Lord said, I want you. And every morning from 6 to 8, she wouldn't come out of her bedroom. She wouldn't brush her hair. Said she wouldn't drink her coffee. Until she had spent that time in prayer with the Lord. So they told me about her, and I was in a meeting in Bristol, Virginia, years ago, and the old man of God, old Fred Potter, said, That's Hattie Crane sitting back here. So I sat down by her after the service. We had cake and coffee in the fellowship hall. I was in my mid 20s. I sat right next to her. I was trying to figure out how to say it and not sound goofy. I taste shoe leather better than anybody. In a moment, I worked up my little courage. And I said, Sister Crane. She didn't know me. I didn't know her. I said, they tell me you're a great Christian. And she reached over and smacked my hand. That hurt. <laughs> It's like the old time school teacher with a ruler. Whack. She said, no, son. I'm not a great Christian. And she leaned in and smiled and rubbed my little hand. That 84-year-old woman, she said, but there's a great Christ in me. <laughs> she said, son, there are no great Christians. There's just a great Christ in us. 
And we got to talking about prayer. And she said, Brother Parsons taught, taught us years ago that there's a little lamb inside every child of God. That's Galatians 4. Yeah, yeah. And said, uh, Brother Joe taught us if you'll just get alone on purpose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you just get alone on purpose in that secret place, yeah. in that closet, said that little lamb will start bleating because it loves him wants him desires him and she said brother Joe taught us that every time that little lamb bleats the, the good he, he said the chief shepherd is faithful to come I hear one of my little lamb bleat and she said when he walks in the door you realize that he already knows what you have need of and she said we never have talked about my needs or my worries. See, when he comes in, he assures me. Wow. That your heavenly Father knoweth you have need of these things. Yeah. Don't even ask about it. You're worrying about tomorrow. This is the end of Matthew 6. Yeah. Yep. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. But seek ye first the kingdom of yeah. God and his righteousness. Yeah. And all these things that the Gentiles are seeking after. Yeah, I'm praying for my car. That transmission. Why no devil's been fighting us? We had a flat tire. All tires go flat. You probably ain't even spiritual. Eventually. Yeah, I'm praying for... <laughs> Sorry. I ain't going to. When they start that, I want you to help me pray. No. I tell them, I ain't going to help you pray. Galatians 6, every man shall bear his own burden. If you burden about it, why are you telling me? Why ain't you told the Lord? Yeah, good. I ain't going to help you pray. <laughs> Wednesday night prayer meeting. Name that body part. <laughs> well, dear time, I didn't come to a medical clinic. I came to a local church. If somebody's got cancer, somebody's got a sick baby, if somebody just had a bad car wreck, it's natural to care one for another. It's natural to tell that and we all begin to pray. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm. And said, he'll come in. And said, all we've ever talked about was his prayer request. Said the Lord, the Lord will come in that room and come in that secret place. Said, and if you'll just be quiet, He'll share with you what's on His heart. And she told me this. She said, He always has sinners on His heart. When that face floats in front of you, He always has preachers on His heart. She said, He's always wanting to pray for His preachers because they're going after the sinners. And said, he'll, he'll float a saint's face in front of you. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I ain't praying for them requests y'all give me. That ain't the real problem. That's what you know about. I ain't going to trust your wisdom. You get in that secret place in the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all are praying for that one child, and that one child's okay. It's that other kid that none of y'all even know. It's the one the devil wants if you'd quit telling God so much and let him talk to you. I don't ever listen to preachers. And when I come in for a meeting, they tell me what's wrong with their church. I, I just like, mm-hmm, yeah. That ain't what's wrong with their church. He don't know what's wrong with the church. God ain't gonna let him see it. He'd be too discouraged. He'd quit. There's things on your pew that nobody knows about and they can't tell nobody. It's just too much. But God knows. He cares. He says, I don't know how to vocalize it, articulate it. You ain't got to. Ah, bah. If Jesus cried like a baby, then I know you can. Mmm. Mm. wonder what else we need in here tonight Abba 
Abba, Father. Slaves can't use that word in that old only to a father. Mm. Everybody look at Galatians 4 4 real quick. I want you to see it. 4 4 and 4 6. I want you to look at it. I'm nearly done. I'm almost done tonight. Said the evangelist who may or may not be almost done, but he, he wanted to offer false peace and consolation to the people. Galatians 4 4. When the fullness of the time was come, do I got it right? God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law and then two verses later he gave it he sent forth the spirit into our hearts what about God sent us his son and then he sent us his spirit y'all ain't helping me I feel like I could fly that's me trying to fly Woo! I believe I can fly that ain't a church song uh, uh. I read a story yesterday, preacher, one of the men I pulled off a shelf. Said a little girl, her daddy had died in, in, in London, in the old history books. And the mama, the widow, she didn't have any money. And the little girl couldn't eat breakfast. There was no breakfast. And she walked down the streets of the ghettos of London and went into her little school and no breakfast. And they said one of the men heard about it and gave her a shilling. I only know what that is. Gave her a coin and said she loved her mom so much she didn't buy breakfast or lunch. She wanted to give it to her mom. The destitute widow but she made change on the walk home. She stopped in a shop and made change and got two 60 pence pieces and said when she got home, she came in bouncing and gave her mom, look what I have to give you, mom. Nice man gave it to me. And gave her mom that shilling and she kept the other one back, that 60 pence. Her mom wept a little bit. Somebody gave this to us. Yes, mom. In about five minutes, she said, I have another one. And the mom said, Why did you give me both at the same time? Said, I wanted to make you happy twice. And God gave us his son. Yeah. on a hill called Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. And 50 days later, yeah. he gave us his spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, knew I, I knew I was in a place better than the vineyard. <laughs> yeah. I come in here and Number one, I seen as many guitars as y'all got cousins, and then I felt good about things. <laughs> seen three fiddles up here, no violins, only seen fiddles. But this uh, piano, y'all done got a modern one, electronic. Is that an organ? Can be. I like when I come in here and I sing not just one but two. I go to church where they have tissue boxes. And I go to church where they have a piano and an organ. I love an organ. In the old time, the, grand, the old grand pianos. I was sitting in church one night. This is a little freebie. This is not dogmatic doctrine. This is just Brother Dean having a good time in church. Amen. Brother Lancaster, that, that piano is going to be Calvary and that organ will be Pentecost. Wow. Wow. The modern day contemporary church has got rid of church instruments. Yeah. They got the Antichrist band going. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wasn't there a band at the foot of the image of Nebuchadnezzar? Sure was. Yeah, sure was. Wasn't a trumpet in it either. No. Oh, no. 
It's a cornet. Cornet. I talked to a man with a master's, a secular master's degree in music. Tell me about that cornet. He said, it's a wannabe trumpet. <laughs> I said, I appreciate you putting that in layman's language. It gives a muted sound, a mellow sound, and it's not loud, and it's, and it's soft. And you can't go to battle with something that sounds like a saxophone. Yeah, right. Right. I need a little help. Yeah, right. I'm sitting there looking at that, the piano. You get a genuine piano. We're independent bad if we can't afford it. <laughs> we'll take whatever's donated. It's a harp. And that one's in the shape of a small harp. It's always a harp. And you know, in the Old Testament, David and others, they played the harp, and it stood upright, and they plucked it with their fingers. But somehow in God's arrangement in the churches, he laid the harp down. He laid it down and let us strike it indirectly with hammers. Little, Y'all ain't helping me. If you don't believe this, act like you do and we'll get along. And an organ, a genuine organ. Makes beautiful sound. We go to Europe a lot in my missions on our World Harvest Baptist missions. And you can go in them old cathedrals and there'll be pipes in the walls. And when they mash the keys, it blows wind through empty vessels. And where there's broken places in the vessel, the wind comes out. <laughs> And the organ's always an accompaniment. And the piano's the main instrument. Calvary's the main thing. And the Holy Ghost breathes and blows that wind through empty vessels. And it'll only make music out of the broken places. I'm glad I ain't got to explain that to y'all. And, and I like them old-timey churches where there's a piano and an organ. Oh, yeah, it's Calvary and Pentecost. All these Antichrist bands, fog machines and light shows and theater curtains and dimming the lights. You ought to dim your lights. You ought to go ahead and name it Dark Light Vineyard. Black ceilings and transgender neutral praise and worship band everybody standing up there you don't know if they're a boy or a girl they all look the same they all dress the same I'm old timey preacher I preach myself right out of all the circles I'll get back in a square and like hey alright Lord what's next hey, come over here these people love the Lord okay, thank you I'm not being a smart aleck pastor. It's sincere. I, just pre I was raised by old-timey men of God. I wonder if 30 years from now they're going to call them legalists and Pharisees for all these drag queens. Man shouldn't wear a dress. I wonder if 30 years from now they're going to call old-time preachers. You're a Pharisee and a legalist because you don't want a man to wear a dress. <laughs> I, was just, I was just thinking of that the other day. Frog boiled in water. I don't want to get used to this old wicked world. I say open the door and let every messed up sinner in town come in here. I don't care how they look, we're going to love them. We're going to love them. Come just as you are. But amen. But honey, after a little while, when sinners get saved, they become saints. They start reading verses like, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. Oh my. Oh my. And it's the Holy Ghost that'll do that. Oh my. Abba. Abba, Father. 
I scribbled notes down yesterday. Brother Lancaster knows I don't use any notes. They just mess me up. I'm tempted to go up there and look. There's some, I wrote some good stuff now. I just don't know what it is. But I ain't concerned about it. I'll tell you this, and then we'll pray. That little baby. Y'all gonna think I'm making this up. I said, Lord, sitting over there, I, I needed strength tonight. I, I really needed the Lord to give me strength tonight. And he did. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to compliment y'all. They 40 people greeted me out there and in here looked me right in the eyes with real kindness. That, that don't hardly happen. Even in our good churches, that don't happen. There might be three. In a good church, might be three. Sixty of y'all. Look deep in my eyes. And many of you didn't know who I was. <laughs> You've dug a good well, preacher. <laughs> you dug a good well. You cleaned it out. <laughs> You've kept the Philistines out of it. The Lord appreciates it. That must be a real good woman, or you couldn't be a good man. <laughs> I don't. I don't know anything about y'all, and I know everything I'll ever need to know. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hear that? Yeah. That baby. That baby, don't y'all worry. Do whatever you got to do. That baby does not know we're in here. It has a need. That baby don't know that we can hear it. It's crying for its mama and crying for its daddy. That baby ain't going to quit until it gets its need met. Well, I appreciate the seminars you gave that baby learning how to express its need. I bet it read seven essentials, five principles, and four keys to getting mama's attention. Probably got the works of E.M. Bounds and Andrew Murray. I mean, I have those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. May have just woke up and is scared. Y'all ever get scared? You ain't got to be able to write a book on prayer. You just cry. Yeah. Yeah. Just cry. You ever have a sickness maybe bothering you? Nobody would know because you can't talk, but you can cry. Mm. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Maybe the baby over there wants comfort. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he sent us the comforter. Yeah, that is he knew about every day, three times a day, there's things that we would be fearful of. <laughs> Don't act like you're a great Christian. You as scared as the rest of us of the things that frighten us. <laughs> Thank God we can cry like a baby. You girls ain't got to be good at praying. You just got to be at praying. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You young Christians ain't got to be good at praying. You just need to be at it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, how? Drop the how. Yeah. Get in there and cry. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah. Holler. Yeah. Wow. Holler for help. Yeah. Good. Peter beginning to sing, Lord, save me. Yeah. Hey, you're the chief apostle. You got the keys around your neck. You're going to preach on the day of Pentecost. Can't you pray better than that? Nope. Lord, save me. Yeah, that's right. That's good. He said, Lord, teach us to pray. He was done in about nine seconds. Go read it. Our Father which art in heaven. Nine seconds, he is done. And he said, the heathen think they'll be heard for their much speaking. 
And you might, the Lord did spend all night in prayer before. There's nights like that. But you ain't got to be good at praying. You just need to spend the night with him. What about the Lord let that baby cry? Right when I was finishing. <laughs> I want everybody here to know all you got to do is just cry and you will that's how you'll know you're saved there'll be a little lamb in there spirit of God sent into your heart he sent forth his son I'm done he sent forth his son but I love that let's get a little gospel in here before we go he was made of a woman and he was made under the law and in Genesis, it was a woman through which sin came. And in Exodus, it was the law through which sin came. But when Christ came, he came back through both of them quarters and picked up everything that we made a mess of. He came through a woman and he came through the law. It was a woman that got this started and it was the law that got us in. And he came back through the law and he came through a woman. And he fixed everything that the first Adam messed up. Yeah, right. yeah. And he put the Spirit of God in our hearts. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to tell you a story. But I want the Lancasters to come. Is it okay, Pastor? Come and strum for a little while. My little girl, Chloe, she's 17. And uh, precious child. We was in a motel actually preaching for Joe Arthur at the Greer meeting. And she was a she was a little girl, not even two. And she's messing around in her stroller and, and and trying to get out of it and Jennifer was changing pressing stuff and she fell and that motel had sharp metal I could have been a millionaire today, but had sharp metal edges sticking out of the mattress. And it caught her nostril hole and just ripped it in half. Ripped her nostril hole right all the way up. You can just strum for us, family, whatever, whatever you got. Brother, I was in a car with Brother Joe Arthur and a few other preachers, and he was going to go show us something. Jennifer called, and I had to run back. I met him at the emergency room. And they said, only one of you can come back here. And my little Chloe hadn't said anything yet, like putting words together. Forget how old she was, little baby girl. Jennifer could tell you. They said, we, we can wait on a cosmetology, a cosmetic. And the doctor kept looking at it. She said, I think I can stitch that up. And it and it'll be fine, but it's your decision. We talked a lot. I said, go ahead. She said, no, only one of you can come back here. And Jennifer said, I can't stand it. You go back there with her. Brother Lancaster, they laid my little baby girl <laughs> on that bed, and she was screaming. Brother, they put a blue blanket over her and just cut out just her little face. And then they had another... For some reason, a little canopy. And they said, Dad, you can get under there with her if you want to. <laughs> she, Brother Lancaster, she was under a blue veil. I was on the top side of it. And I stuck my head under that canopy. And me, the father... I put my hands under that blue thing where, and I held both of her hands. And she looked up from that blue veil. And I looked at her and the shots and the needles. And I held both their hands and I talked to her. I said, Daddy's here. Just look me in the face, baby. I inclined under her. Yeah. And I heard her cry. Yeah. Sure. And she was on the other side of the blue veil, but I stuck my face down there when she stuck her face up. Mm. Is anybody getting this? Yeah. Sure. We're stuck under this blue veil. 
There are times that we need him. Put his hands down there where we are and put his face where we can see in the... And uh, girls and mothers, ladies, she said, first time she'd ever said it, she said, Daddy, Daddy. She'd never said it. Daddy. And I said, I'm here. I'm here. Look at me. It's going to be all right. It won't hurt for long. Mm, yeah. Daddy. Yeah. Yeah. I tucked her in last night. She's 17. And Kendall Bell's 14. And for a month, they just turned their birthdays for last week. And, and they've, they've been aggravating me. They said, Daddy, I'm 17. No more baby talk when you tuck me in. Because I said, oh, my little, I just talked, baby talk to him. She said, Dad, I'm 17. No more baby talk. I said, get over it, kid. It's going to be baby talk. I petted her head. I told her a bedtime story. Told her about Oogaloo, the big white bear that lives in the biggest cave and got an old gray dog. She said, Dad. I'm 17. I don't want no baby stories. You're going to get them. <laughs> I said, you come back here one day with kids. You're getting the same thing, and they're getting it. You'll always be my baby. Right. Yeah. Right. And when she hollered, Daddy, there's just something. Yeah. Right. Me and her together. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Some of y'all are flat on your back, and your face has been ripped off. He'll put his arms under there. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 And right when we did that, we had a seminar and some instructors come in and teach Chloe how to communicate to her father. No, she just cried. It was in her. You might be lost and it ain't, he ain't in you. Reading, you can't cry, Abba. He ain't in you crying, Abba. But Jesus cried, Abba, so you could. That cry rent the veil. That cry rent the heavens. That cry, that cry opened up hell and emptied it out. And it opened up heaven and filled it up. That cry. Bow your heads. They're fixing to sing. My altar call is very simple. If you want to come pray, everybody stand. Let's come pray if you want to. If you're lost and need to be saved, come to Christ. He'll save you. If you're under a blue veil and you're looking up and your face has been ripped off, He'll be with you. Sing for us, dear family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad he came. I was not worth earth what it would cost. Still, my Savior paid it on that rugged cross. Nothing else would satisfy. Nothing else could pay that price. My sins are many. God's blood was plenty. Savior paid it on 
that rugged cross or nothing else would satisfy no one else could pay that price my sins were many God's blood was plenty If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.